they're slouchy and snippy and doofy. Mm -hmm. This is my uh, dwarf fanfic. (laughs) (laughs) All right, here we go. The Daily Tech News Show is brought to you by listeners like us. Go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash donate to learn how. Mm, Go nuts. No, Homer, that's donate. But I'm sure Tom wouldn't mind donuts either. Visiting their sponsors and crowd. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, July 15, 2015. I'm Tom Mary. Joining me today, like most Wednesdays, Scott Johnson, Chief of Clan Frog Pants. Yeah, nearly every Wednesday. That's true. And uh, thank you for having me on. As always, Wednesdays are my some of my favorite days of the week. There's there's only seven. Yeah, and- I've I've got seven favorite days of the week, and Wednesday's one of them. Yeah, it's at least in the top three, but uh, thank you for having me here. No, man, it's great. Uh, and I know you had to miss TMS this morning, so it's even more specialer uh, for me. What's yeah. happening is, you know, when you try to run a small convention, millions of things seem to crop <laughs> out of nowhere. And, and when that's over, man, will the, su- will the sailing be smooth? When you try to run a small convention, that's huge. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know what you mean, man. I, I actually don't really know what you mean because I've never run a convention, but I, I've seen you in action, uh, so I can imagine. Let's tell the people some tech news, shall we? Sure. All right. I'm in. Google has announced their purchases on Google program, according to TechCrunch. Uh, partners can choose to show text in their mobile ads that says, buy on Google. Users who tap will go to a page where they can buy the product. Google will host the pages and process the payments from a Google account, while the merchants get to have some branding and handle product fulfillment. Google said it's a, a test of the feature. They're doing a test with a dozen or so retail partners over the next few weeks with plans to expand availability to advertisers throughout the realm of the United States of America by late 2015 or early 2016. In fact, Scott and I are going to dig into this topic a little more because it has ramifications for all sorts of things going on in the industry. Yeah, I have many questions. We'll see if we can answer some of those later. Uh, The White House is piloting a program to provide 275,000 that's triple zeros, low-income families with free or deeply discounted broadband services. This is all according to The Verge. In partnership with Google, Cox, Sprint, and CenturyLink, the program called Connect Home, planned to roll out in 27 cities across the United States. This includes the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. It's kind of a big deal. The plan will start trying to sign up families and grade school-aged children. Google Fiber will offer the free service in Atlanta, Durham, Kansas City, and Nashville. Cox will offer broadband for $9.99, uh, that's per month, in cities including Macon, Georgia, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and New Orleans. Uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development will require new public housing developments to support broadband going forward, which is, I think, the most interesting thing here. Best Buy PBS, the American Library Association, and Boys and Girls Clubs of America will offer Internet training to these low-income families, and uh, they'll start doing that in a number of cities as well. So signing up families with school aged children, that, that's good. Uh, providing free or low-cost access, that's good. 275,000 families strung out across 27 cities. I looked it up. 275,000 families is about 2.3 or really almost three-tenths of 1% of the households in the United States. So this is not a large percentage. Anything's better than nothing. I will grant you that. Well, and it's uh, a pilot program they're yeah. calling. Hopefully that means that. That's a good point. They'll pick it up for a full series. <laughs> yeah, I hope that I hope people enjoy the pilot. Uh, U.S. Justice Department and Europol have shut down the Darkode.com online forum, according to Reuters. Operation Shrouded Horizon included the U.S. FBI, Europol, and other countries, including Brazil, Israel, Nigeria, and Australia. U.S. Justice Department has charged 12 people with crimes, including conspiring to commit computer fraud, wire fraud, and money laundering. Europol said there have been 28 arrests and a total of 70 individuals are being investigated. Among those charged was Johan Anders Goodmans of Solobrin, Sweden, known as Synthetic, who the Justice Department says is Darkode's administrator. Residents of Pennsylvania, New York, Florida, Indiana, Wisconsin, Louisiana, Slovenia, Spain, and Pakistan were all among the indicted. I looked around a little to see if this was what it seemed to be, which was maybe the biggest sting of this type. Um, in the modern era, in the information age, and I couldn't find anything bigger or at the very least as wide-reaching 
which I think is super interesting that we're we're starting. We'll, we'll probably start seeing more of this, but you're going to start seeing more organizations like this being taken down for, you know, various hacking type uh, infringements on humanity. And I don't think this will be the end of that. But um, yeah, this is a big one, man. Huge. It is. Uh, it was a difficult forum to get into. You didn't just run your Tor router and, and pop on by. You had to submit a resume, show proof of previous criminal activity, get a sponsor to sign off on you and bring you in. Uh, so they had to do some pretty snazzy, <laughs> I guess is a word for it, infiltration uh, to be able to get in here and take this down. It's, it's, it is definitely a big deal in the InfoSec community for sure. Well, I'm very much looking forward to Tom Clancy's Operation Shrouded Horizon coming <laughs> Me too. Up. Hey, by the way, uh, going back to the uh, the Home Connect or the Connect Home story, uh, TV's Egon in the chat room says the cable company I worked for was trying to cut a deal with the Navajo Nation to get right of way to send fiber over their land and give them free internet as part of the deal, but they never seem to be very interested. Oh, uh, so maybe that's part of the reason Choctaw Nation got involved there. Interesting. Oh, very interesting. Uh, Reuters is reporting that Apple's updated their iPod line. It's about time, actually. They've been uh, been sitting on the old ones for a while. New iPod Touch has an 8-megapixel iSight camera. The iPhone 6s, A8, and M8 chips inside of the thing. The price point for the revamped Touch are as follows. $399 U.S. for a new 128-gigabyte model, $299 for the 64, and $199 for a 16-gigabyte model. All the new iPods, as well as the Shuffle and the Nano, are available in brand new colors. We've got dark blue, pink, and gold. At least gold is new. Yeah, it's that champagne gold or mm -hmm. champold oh, or gold pain. I'm not sure how you say it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a, it's still a very small screen. They, they didn't make it a, a it, when it says iPhone six internals. That means internals. It's, it's still uh, the smaller iPod Touch screen on the outside. You didn't get a six inch screen, but. Uh, I don't, I, you know, they have iPod, they have Apple Music coming out. I, I guess the most interesting thing for me here is that the iPod has gotten to the point where they just roll out new versions. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't make any big deal. They not don't even try stage. to tack them onto another announcement. Yeah, it's not Tim Cook up on a stage or anything. But, uh, you know, as a thing that you could look at in the marketplace and go, well, if it's got that camera, that's pretty, pretty awesome. This makes this a really great point and shoot. And everyone's always looking for a point and shoot that doesn't have to have a some kind of contract tied to it. So... I feel like even more than the music side of it, although with Apple Music, maybe that changes things, but uh, the focus here is probably camera and apps, and there's still plenty of kids who want them that parents yeah. don't have phone yet. So, yeah, there's, there's I, still market. I did not note the author, and so I apologize for not giving credit properly, but someone out there who was writing up this today pointed out that you get a $50 Android phone, pair it with one of these, and suddenly you've got a pretty, I mean, yeah, you have to carry two items, but it's a whole lot cheaper than an unlocked iPhone 6 or 6 Plus. Oh, that's a really good point. Yeah, just use the, use the other contract. That's great. Or you can buy a cheap HTC phone. New affordable desire phones are coming to the U.S., according to Engadget. All of them are built on Qualcomm's quad-core Snapdragon 210 with 8 megapixel rear cameras and micro SD and micro SDXC card slots. You can get up to two terabytes in there. The Desire 520 comes to Cricket Wireless, 526 to Verizon, T-Mobile and AT&T get the 626, and the 626S will be prepaid only. Prices will vary by carrier. This is HTC's nice mid-range phone line, and it's very popular in lots of countries. Well, good. I'm glad to see they're still doing that. Um, and I just had a thought for the gold. It should be, you were right, it should be sham gold, because it's not real gold. It's kind of champagne. So it works but can you con then you're concluding the whole word gold. So do we have to call it sham old to make it an actual con? Sham old. <laughs> That's, That's what I pretended to be old. I was sham old. Uh, Pew Research in the news. And they've just done a Knight Foundation study about the evolving role of news on Twitter and Facebook. This is pretty interesting. They found that 63% of U.S. Facebook and Twitter users so not everybody, but the users of Facebook and Twitter, active users surveyed, said that these platforms serve as a source of news about events and issues beyond what they get from their friends and their families. The study also found the proportion of users who say they follow breaking news on Twitter is nearly twice as high as those who say they do so on Facebook. That's kind of been my experience as well, 59% versus 31%. Uh, Facebook users are more likely to post and respond to content. I feel like that was a... I think we all felt like we knew that. It's nice to see a study better that out. Anyway, while Twitter users are more likely to follow news organizations, CNN, breaking news, whoever. Uh, however, 60% of both Twitter and Facebook users said that the sites were, quote, not a very important way, unquote, that they get their news. And if you throw in people who don't use Twitter or Facebook at all, the percent of U.S. adults who use both Facebook and Twitter to find news drops to 8%. 
so much, much lower. 66% of U.S. adults see, uh, or rather use Facebook, 17% use Twitter. So there's a lot of numbers here. And uh, if I were to try to sum this up, I guess what I'd say is, hey, more people notice that they're seeing news if they use Twitter and Facebook, but still not a lot of people using Twitter and about two-thirds of us use Facebook. Would it be hard? Yeah, this is totally hypothetical question, but would it be hard to say where people are actually getting their news? I mean, my guess is it's still TV. Oh, that's, a, that's another study. And I bet you, you can do a Google search and find exactly that information out. In fact, I feel like we had a Pew Research study about that not too long ago that, that kind of looked overall at where people were getting their news. Uh, but yeah, I, it's going to be online news services before Twitter and Facebook and whether television and newspapers, actual like print newspapers are falling into the mix on one side or the other. You know, I, I, it almost doesn't matter for the purposes of this discussion, which is this is coming across in some reports as Twitter and Facebook are the new source of news. Yeah. And that's not what it's saying. What it's saying is people are noticing news on Twitter and Facebook a whole lot, but none of them think it's their primary source, right? And their primary source is one of those other things you mentioned. Yeah, I, it's funny. Articles and studies like this force me to face the changes I've made in the way I consume news content. And it's completely different than it was, say, a decade ago. And today I am one of these Twitter, Facebook, you know, internet news guys. And I don't get it from TV at all. I'm an unplugger, and I don't get it from you know cable networks or any of that other stuff. And I certainly don't get it from a newspaper on the daily. So, but do you go to Twitter or Facebook for your news, or do you go somewhere else? Um, that's a really good question. The, the 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 little bit of thought I've given it, I think what happens is I react to news on those platforms. I'll see something breaking and go, oh, so and so died, or that, whoa, somebody bombed what, and I'll see it in my feed. But I'm not there to get it. I was there to just, uh, what's going on with everybody? Oh, Tom said this, Veronica said that, and oh, breaking news, there's been a shooting somewhere. And then I've got it. I'm linking off to something else. I may be invest investigating more, but you're right. I don't really go there for my news. And I know you can do lists, you know, and people create news lists and things like that. But I'm often just too busy to be bothered with that. And, I, and sometimes news comes to me. Maybe that's a factor in this that will become more interesting as time goes on because it is kind of coming to us now instead of us having to go to it. Yeah, I'm right there with you. If, if you ask me, do you see news on Twitter or Facebook? I'd say yes. If you ask me, do you consider it an important way to get news? I'd say no. I'm right, I'm right here in the middle of this study because I go to sources. I go to my RSS feeds. I go to the BBC News. I, you know, I go to all kinds of places to find news. Those are the important places to find news. Uh, but Twitter and Facebook are just those serendipitous ways that I pick it up. Like you yeah, said. often it's the same news and sometimes the same news organization. So it's, you know, it's interesting. And Gadget reports that Samsung has launched its slimmest smartphone ever. Uh, the 5.7-inch Galaxy A8 is 5.9 millimeters thick, weighs 5.3 ounces, and has a near bezel-less display. The phone also features a fingerprint sensor and a hand wave detection. Cost you about 3,499 yuan in China. That's around U.S. $560. No word on availability outside the country, though. Seems like a cool phone. You'd probably sell okay over here. Uh, you know, that Galaxy A series is always thin, but then not quite as good. Mm -hmm. So if you like thin, go get it. You do give stuff up with that. Yeah. Everyone try to pretend that the new MacBook isn't ridiculous. But it's really thin. Yeah, it's thin. It's thin, all right. <laughs> uh, Fortune reports that Yik Yak will allow users to post photos to its anonymous messaging service. Uh, no one, uh, no, no, and no inappropriate photos. Okay, anything you would send to your mother, basically, illegal content or faces will be allowed in the local feeds. Yik Yak will approve all photos before they are allowed in the feeds. The app will ask users once for a phone number to prevent bots. So a little, a little bit of security there, I suppose. Uh, if you don't know about Yik Yak, it's it's basically a bathroom wall, uh, and I mean that in most senses. Like, there's some really disgusting things that get posted in there, but it's anonymous and it's local. So for me, if I ever look at Yik Yak, I usually see the local colleges like Loyola Marymount, Santa Monica College, etc., maybe even UCLA, uh, po students posting things about keggers and just studying and all of that. That's kind of its demo. So the idea of putting photos in here 
uh, I think would be very disturbing for some people who like the anonymity of it. But then Yik Yak's like, no, we're going to hire people to make sure nobody's faces show up. It's really interesting. Yeah, we had, I, t- I tried this app out forever ago when it first came out and it was for a talk on a show about it or something. And my son came to me probably five months ago and said, dad, can I get Yik Yak on my phone? And I said, no. <laughs> so I'll, I'm just putting it out there that if you're a parent of a 15-year-old, consider the N-word and say no. The next uh, web is another N-word, but it's a good one. That reports that taxi hailing app Get, J- G-E-T-T, has updated its Android and iOS apps to make it easier for visually impaired and blind users to book a taxi. When enabled, the app reads an audio description of where users are pressing on the screen and which feature the user is interacting with. The company was approached by 17-year-old Addie Kushner, who has been blind since birth, with a request to make the app more accessible and even offered to help do to make it so if they wanted his help. To switch on the feature, you can enable voiceover or talkback in the most updated version of Get, available in the U.S., U.K., Russia, and Israel. Good thing to do. It's good PR. Yes, please do that. Good stuff. Uh, CNNBC is reporting that venerable music legend Neil Young posted on Facebook Wednesday that he will no longer allow his music to be streamed. Young wrote this, I don't need my music. I'm not doing the voice. I don't need my music to be devalued by the worst quality in the history of broadcasting or any other form of distribution, unquote. And then he also wrote, when when the quality comes back, I'll give it another look. Never say never. He made absolutely zero mention that this includes his Pono music service, which he helped develop. Yeah, and I I did a quick check, and the Neil Young music is still up on Pono, but I bet he hasn't pulled it down from all the streaming services. He may have overspoken, too, and his people are like, no, 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 hold on, we our thing, because one of the the hallmarks of the Pono service, as I understand it, I haven't used it, but is that it had much better fidelity sound. Um, That was kind of by design, and he wanted that as part of him being involved in it, so it very well may be that all he's really talking about is the Spotify's Apple Music's and, you know, RDO's of the world, and, and and not talking about his own service. He wants to teach your children to appreciate music. And this was just a song before he went. I CNBC- hope he teaches them well, Tom. I hope he teaches them well. CNBC reports Intel announced earnings per share of 55 cents on revenue of $13.2 billion. Analysts had expected 50 cents on revenue of 13.04 billion dollars. Uh, guidance for the full year has revenue down by approximately 1%. And Netflix had their earnings as well, added better than expected 3.28 million streaming subscribers in the June quarter. Uh, people tend to look at subscribers with Netflix more than revenue. They did well on revenue as well. And in fact, uh, Netflix said that the new season of Orange is the New Black spurred a record amount of streaming. So oh. all good news there. Did they does this I I don't know if it does, but does this include their recent sort of international expansion stuff they've been doing? Oh well, yes, it does. Absolutely. Now this okay. is three point two eight million subscribers worldwide, and they are still expecting to have two hundred qu- countries by the end of the year. Great. Time for our subreddit uh, acknowledgments. Many of the stories you have heard already were submitted to our subreddit. Thank you. Get in there, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com, submit some stuff and vote on it as well. The voting is probably the most important thing because that's what we look at is like, oh, did this get a lot? Did it not get much? Sometimes we'll put it in anyway if we think it's important. Sometimes we won't put it in anyway, even if it's got a lot of votes, if we're thinking it's maybe overhyped or something. But we do look at that. It does help us figure out uh, the tally every day. Uh, and today, there was so much Reddit. Starfury Zeta submitted the Gawker report on former Reddit CEO Yishan Wang's latest post. He took responsibility for loosening up Reddit's free speech policies in his day, and he defended former interim CEO Ellen Pao, who, says, who he says resisted the board's push to ban all the hate subreddits. New CEO and co-founder Steve Huffman posted that neither he nor co-founder Alexis Ohanian, quote, created Reddit to be a bastion of free speech, but rather as a place where open and honest discussion can happen. Huffman is going to host an AMA on Thursday at 1 p.m., and you can bet it will be a doozy. Yeah, and that post is a doozy. There immediately somebody found an old post by the same co-founder that uh, seemed to say almost the opposite of what he's now saying. By the co-founder or by the former CEO, Yishan Wong? By the co-founder, by the same guy back in 2012 or something. By Steve Huffman or Alexis Ohanian? I thought so Steve. By, by Huffman saying, like, this is a bastion of free speech. It's a big open thing, and everyone oh, should okay. do whatever they want. And, and it just it felt antithetical to what this statement is. Do At you least, have a link to that so we I'm know gonna, exactly what he wrote? I'm going to find that. 
Because especially in this story, saying, I think he might have posted something contrary to this is kind of important. Oh, here it is. It's in the, it's in the actual comments of the link we already have. So Got on it. Oh, excellent. Con- content policy update, uh, I'm just going to see if I can whip down to it. Um, there's a, like a before and after. and looks like the comments have buried what I saw, but it's in here. I just saw it. This- oh, here it is. Okay. So they, they, they call out lines like this. Uh, this was in Reddit 2012, supposedly being attributed to him. Okay, now this, they, they, I haven't gone through to make sure it's sure, for sure him. But this is what it says. We will tirelessly defend the right to freely share information on Reddit in any way we can, even if it is offensive or discusses something that may be illegal. We remain committed to protecting Reddit as an open platform. And they have a link to the, to the original post. Uh, then, you know, today's obviously is we have no obligation to support. Well, can you group. click on that link to the original post? And make sure that it actually goes to that post and it actually says what they're saying it says. I'm sorry. Uh, No, no, no. This is good. This is what I do. You're a newsman, Tom. Let's see. I'm looking. Yeah, here's the original post. I'm going to give it to... I'm going to give it to us in here. Uh, Not easily. There we go. I'll put it right under the article. Uh, And then this thing talks. Now, sadly, what it appears to me as I read this is that some of this stuff was not... Uh, was taken a little bit out of context. For example, there's a a line item in here that says, today, this is back in 2012, uh, says, today we are adding another rule. No suggestive or sexual content featuring minors. Right. So So what he's saying is, we care deeply about using Reddit as a platform. This doesn't contradict what he wrote yesterday in any way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exactly the same thing of what he wrote yesterday, which is, we want it to be an open platform for discussion, but we don't consider it a place where you can say whatever you want. So we are adding a rule, no suggestive or sexual content featuring minors. That's what he wrote three years ago. Correct. Uh, my, that's why I'm my, always wanting no, no, to check these things. It's good that you did because my, my, my f- assertion is that this is the stance that the entire comment section is taking, that they are saying something now that they said the opposite of back in 2012. And after now looking at this article, I don't... I don't see that it's all that tonally different. Than what if you saying. want to have a problem with Steve Huffman's stance of like, you know what, we're not going to allow certain things uh, on Reddit because you think it should be more open, that's great. Uh, but this is not an example of, of a, a to- an, a, you know, an about face on his part. He, yeah. He's saying, we've never been a bastion of free speech, but a place where open and honest discussion could happen. And that's what he's saying in that old post from three years ago is like, we want this to be a place of open and honest discussion, but sometimes it crosses the line and where we think it crosses the line, we're going to, we're going to call that out. So Are you saying there's rhetoric and hyperbole surrounding this whole Reddit thing? Is that what you're telling me? I kind of think so. Yeah. I kind of think so. Yeah. Am I, is that, am I, am I being too extreme by no, thinking that? No. I think that you're absolutely right. And in fact, it may redefine what those two words mean on the internet. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, there's more. Captain Kipper, for example, who's always sending us cool things, submitted yeah, an end gadget story that the Commodore Pet is back as an, as an Android phone. I almost said an iPhone. That ain't going to happen. With a Commodore 64 emulator on it. So your dreams have come true. Android Police believes uh, the phone is a rebranded OrgTech Wa phone. Uh, the phone will be available in Italy, France, Poland, Germany, all later this month, around $300 US for the 16 gig and, the, and 360 for the 32 gig version of it. If you want to live your your nostalgic uh, Commodore 64 bone to its fullest, which uh, who even knows what that means? What I just said. Then, <laughs> then here's your chance. I uh, I'm a big Commodore 64 fan. Still have a Commodore 64. Was the second computer was the computer I really learned to program on. I don't want this. Did you have a tape drive? With yours? I had both the tape drive and the 1541 disk drives. Two of them. Nice. Okay. Strike it rich submitted the Hackaday post on how to build a proxy ham in the wake of Bill Cottle's DEF CON cancellation. The article describes using a ubiquity Rocket M base station, a Raspberry Pi, and a Yagi antenna and, and an Ethernet cable. Uh, Ars Technica also notes that Rob Graham at Arata Security has his own recipe, and Proxy Gambit is a similar device for $235. Use of any of these products may violate your local laws, though, so check to make sure you're not breaking the law before you go and either obtain or use one of these things. But even though under questionable circumstances this talk has been canceled, there's still plenty of ways to do what he was going to talk about. I suspect Darren Kitchen has things to say about this. That's yeah, I bet he does. That's a good point. And that is a look at the headlines. I suspect Scott Johnson has something to say about purchases on Google, uh, which everybody's calling a buy button. Minor quibble. 
the mockups that they're showing is just text, but it doesn't really matter. You're on mobile, and Google is got to be able to increase the amount of money it makes for mobile. What everyone's saying about Google, they were saying about Facebook a year ago, and Facebook has started to make that transition to investors' satisfaction. Just today, a quarterly Adobe Digital Index came out showing that marketers are shifting their ad spending to mobile, but Google is flatlined. Uh, they're expected in Q2 to have raised mobile revenues 1% to 2%, not nearly enough. Bing and Yahoo are projected to grow at much higher rates. Google will still get 55% of the $82 billion spent on search, uh, but that won't last forever if they don't move. Baidu's number two, by the way, at 9%. So they have a big lead. Uh, after April's mobile Geddon, where they changed search results on mobile based on mobile-friendly sites, cost per click rates for mobile search ads did rise 16%, although click-through fell 9%. Uh, and Facebook display ads in that same period grew around four times Google. So there you go. That's why Google needs to do this. That's why Google is, you know, we're head over heels trying to tell you, hey, we've got all these great features on mobile. Sell your ads. Scott, how does this strike you as a small businessman and consumer? Well, in a few ways, a couple of things that struck me while you were rereading this, and I was going through all of this earlier today, kind of trying to make sense of what their plans are and what the existing market is. And the fact that this is a push in general by not just Google, but a lot of people to create a, uh, an easier buying experience for people on mobile makes sense to me because now often is the time where I'm on a website, I want to buy a thing, and it's kind of a pain. If I have to put a credit card in, it's a huge pain, and there's a bigger chance of goofing up the number because I got a little keyboard. Uh, I'm on the bus or something. I'm trying to do this with people around me. Like It's just a very different proposition than desktop computing ever presented with buying. So I get the whole push. I understand why we're all doing it. Um, the, the big concerns I have are, are this. One, oh, also, by the way, I think less click-through in those numbers is indicative of the same problem. People see ads on mobile now, and mobile ads are more expensive, so it seems like, whoa, it's a new push toward mobile advertising. But the reason click-throughs are down is because, again, there's a pain in the butt factor involved. If I'm clicking through on a mobile phone, that will sometimes launch an app. Sometimes it launches in a new tab in the browser I'm using. Sometimes the browser I'm using, because I downloaded it from the App Store, is not the same browser as everyone else is using, so it's not the same mobile experience. Like, there's that, again, that pain in the butt factor. So I understand everybody wanting to do that. My concerns would be this. They're going to launch this thing with limited partners, and that makes sense. You know, you got to start somewhere, and then you build it out. Will that have ever, ever sort of extend to a guy like me that has a store, and I sell a bunch of prints on it, and let's say I want to do some AdWords or whatever and have people see it on mobile sites and buy it there, what are my options down the road? Because what it feels like is a garden where only big companies can exist. And little guys are going to have to figure out other ways. You're kind of taking away their... It's like, you know, pre-App Store days, pre-Google Play and pre... Well, hold, hold on, though. We don't know that that's the case. In fact, Google said it was going to roll it out to all advertisers. So it could be a templated thing where they say, here, fill in this form. Tell us where your checkout uh, is. Uh, or, or, or maybe they're going to they're give you a separate bill of, of, of you know, merchandise that you'll have to fulfill on. But if you're already fulfilling on your own merchandise, they're going to say, here you go. We'll, we'll, we'll plug into your big cartel or your Shopify or whatever and help you do this or at least give you the information you need to do that. If, if, if they do that, if they say anybody can sign up, you just have to allow them to use Google Wallet and then we'll send you the money. So you're going to have to have a Google account. Would, would, does that change it for you? Yeah, it does. And, and if the truth be told, uh, I'm taking some devil's advocate stances on this simply because they probably, this raises questions, forgetting about all like the, you know, the stuff it raises in the EU about net neutrality and some other issues you brought up earlier, which we can totally get to. But, but for me, I'm actually kind of excited. You give me a platform where I can sell more stuff. It means a percentage of something I'm doing goes to somebody. For developers, that's to Apple or somebody else for an app store for... Uh, you know, on Steam, if you want to get your game noticed, that means Steam gets a little cut, but the benefit to you is much greater because now you've got a platform where there's a lot of exposure. Um, heck, we could thank free services like Facebook and Twitter for giving us a platform where we have way more exposure and way more spread. So, for you know, I'm never going to poo-poo a thing that gives me more access to more people. For me, at this point, it's all just about whether or not I, I, I am given, you know, it's democratized access to the same kind of tools. Right. And whether or not you know, Google takes a bigger chunk on you know off the top when they when they sell the ads to you in the first place. I don't know that part. But what is this? What does this do? For just going back to my whole point about 
net neutrality and issues overseas and other stuff. What, what, do you think that any of this is a, is a hurdle for them? Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that I have a feeling it will be available to pretty much anybody who can work within that system, right? Like if you sell your stuff on Cafe Press or Zazzle, uh, then it might not work. Uh, but if you fulfill your own stuff, then I have a feeling that it's that it's you're going to have a way to be able to take advantage of this. In fact, I'm trying to find the exact uh, early 2015, 2016 rollout in their blog post. The way it should work is, let's say, uh, we'll just give a scenario here. I've made a 12 by 18 print and I want to sell it on my store and it's up there on the store and people can go there manually and get it. But I've also bought some ad time or however you want to say it, some ad words, some ad space with Google and it shows up on a bunch of mobile sites. People go, they say buy now through Google, they click it. I don't exactly understand how that money gets to my PayPal account, which is how I gather money from the store. So there's a lot of questions, you know, just underpinning technical structural questions I have. Um, but in theory, that's how it would work, right? I mean, I may have to use another, I may have to plug Google in as a, as a payment processor or some other thing may have to happen. But hopefully the way it works is it's just simply new order came in. This one happened to come from a Google click as opposed to that one that came before on the store directly. Fulfill it, send it out, sign it, be done. Like that's the dream. Yeah. If, if that's what they do, then I'm happy. Yeah, and I think they, uh, I think they will intend to make this as widely uh, available as possible because they won't want somebody saying, "Oh, here's another situation where Google is favoring particular segments." Uh, but it also does put emphasis on buying through Google's own ads, which are above the natural search results, uh, which could also be an issue. You have, I mean, you do have to be an advertiser. You do have to be paying money to take advantage of this. So. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of a, a dance for them to do there. Although I think they can do it. Uh, what this really points out to me, I'll, I'll tell you, the biggest thing that hit me in, in looking at this story is that the mobile platform is not as good for a user as the desktop platform, and it's all about multitasking. Every time I've talked to somebody who's like, I can do everything I want on a tablet. I don't need a desktop anymore. I've I've struggled to explain why that's not true for me. But the simple thing is multitasking. And they they mention in this blog post how, well, when you're on a desktop, it's easy to just have someone link over to your site and people will shop, right? There's no friction there. On mobile, though, because everything's in apps, there's friction because you have to open an app. And that's one of the other announcements today. Google said they're going to allow deep linking into apps from search ads as well because they're trying to replicate the web now. They're starting to realize the downside to siloing everything off in apps and they're trying to work around that frankly man google you want to win this i would make android an html5 based web app and operating system similar to firefox os as soon as possible and say now everybody can have an app and everybody can can link across things and multitasking becomes so much easier some of multitasking is just going to be screen size and tap interface i get that uh, but a lot of it has to do with siloing everything off in these apps. Yeah, and you forget how much you just alt-tab and move over to that thing and quickly enter this and a new tab opens. And all the while, the stuff you were reading as a reference behind it all is still sitting there so you can look at it. And, you know, desktop brings this stuff and has brought it for so long that uh, you, you do feel it when you're on mobile. Like, you feel the convenience. Like, man, mobile, this is the best. I'd love it. I'm anywhere I want to be. And I just checked that email and answered that guy. But there's something that's sometimes intangible that just feels off about the experience on, I don't care what phone it is, you just feel weird about that, the way that worked, the way I had to copy and paste that. I couldn't just shortcut key to a, a, a quick entry for my to-do list. Like there's just these, these little quirky things in this, in this forest full of apps that, that they've got to figure out a way to conquer. And, and we as users do too. It's, I don't think it's settled how we're ultimately going to want to use all this stuff and that yeah. includes buying stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's a big challenge for them. It's interesting to see Yahoo and, and, and Bing doing, doing well in the same period. I don't know if that just means they're getting a piece of the pie that left Google or if that's a, something else. It's just an expanding market. It's, that's hard to say. But that, I thought those numbers were interesting. And don't forget Pinterest. Twitter, Facebook, all doing similar buy button type things where they're trying to make that mobile purchasing aspect frictionless. They're all trying to solve for that same issue. It'll be interesting to see which one does it best. Have you ever bought from Twitter real quick? One last question. I'm just curious if you've ever done that. 
nope. the email thing. Neither have I. I'm really curious about that experience, and it was such so much talk about it, and then I haven't heard a thing, and I'm not even sure I've seen too many ads that have prompted me yeah, to. Yeah, me either. So, interesting. Our pick of the day comes from Tim, who wants to know why Ignite, E-G-N-Y-T-E, at Ignite.com, is never brought up in cloud storage conversations. He says, could it be because they don't offer a free version, just a limited trial? Is it because they're not catering to individuals? Uh, their minimum uh, plan is five users. It's a business plan. But Tim says, I don't know. I've used Ignite for about a year, and it is by far the most capable, fastest, most feature-rich file cloud storage that I've ever seen. Their hybrid functionality alone is so useful, I could never be without it again. Tim says, it blows the doors off box, Dropbox, and OneDrive. SharePoint trying to be a file system. I'm adding the... Uh, isn't even in the same league. My two cents. Keep up the great work. Uh, so Tim is a big Egg Knight fan, and so Egg Knight's getting its due today, thanks to Tim. Uh, these are these picks are never sponsored. They're always user picks. I have not used Egg Knight. I cannot say whether it's any good. The only thing I will say is the reason it doesn't get brought up is it is an enterprise class cloud storage system. Uh, you you minimum have to pay for five users out of the box for your small business plan. So it's it's not really classed the same as Dropbox and OneDrive are. Although Dropbox and Box and OneDrive all would like to be enterprise class products as well as individual consumer products. So they yeah. are competing. They're almost going the other direction. You hear about their new initiatives and enterprise solutions. Yeah, yeah. It seems to be coming that way. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ignite did maybe a little more consumer direct single guy sort of stuff at, at some point. But they're not marketing in that way. So I'm guessing a ton of people who've heard this show, I've only heard about it in passing. But mo I'll bet most people haven't even heard of them because they're not in the market for, you know, a big enterprise solution like that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, let's hope, dear writer inner, what's his name again, Tim, that they uh, maybe they make a version for me. That'd be great. Send your picks to us. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. You can find my picks at DailyTechNewsShow.com slash picks. Our email today bears on our conversation a little bit, Scott Johnson. Marcelo in Sao Paulo wrote in and did a little legwork for us. Thank you, Marcelo. I've been running some Comscore numbers and notice a decline in Google search in Brazil, both in page views, whose trend is usually similar to queries, and unique users. There's a steep decline in desktop searches explained by the shift to mobile, but even in the multi-platform report, Google is softly declining. He found an article from the New York Times which he thinks confirms his suspicions as to why. He says, even though iOS represents a smaller share of devices out there, we know that iOS users have a large piece of internet usage in mobile, and Apple has a deal with Bing. They have a deal with Bing for, for Siri. The search box does not fit devices like smartwatches, Internet of Thing devices, and personal assistants like Amazon Echo. Google will have to either expand its domination to all of those multiple entry points or lose market share to competitors. The new mobile world opens new opportunities to these competitors, and Google dominance gets more challenging. Uh, yeah, what an excellent perspective where as far, again, Google dominating on the desktop right now, but that's like saying Nokia dominated in, in candy bar phones. Uh, you've got to make the jump to that next wave if you want to continue to dominate. And right now, it's not a sure thing that all of your future devices will use Google as their search engine. That's super fascinating. I never looked at it from this perspective, but it really rings true, especially with the Amazon Echo. I think it's it's a opaque experience. You don't even know what that thing is using for its search results when you're asking it questions. You just know it's working well. And that's got to be a little scary <laughs> if we have lots and lots and lots of devices out there that aren't using Google as their back end, but people aren't caring. Because if you're on a desktop computer, like, oh, well, use Google. You only use Google. No one uses anything else. Use Google. I mean, you have that one weird advantage of brand recognition, and, and you've earned that, Google. But, but when it comes to everything else, if my fridge starts talking to me, the last thing I'm thinking about is, does this use Google? Because if not, forget it. You know, and I think that's a real, that's a really, really. <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah. I don't care if my fridge uses Bing, just as long as the search results give me what I was asking for. Exactly. And you wouldn't say that with a computer or even a mobile device. Like they're going to, this is all changing real quick. And man, he, he nailed it. That's a really great email. I bought a, uh, a ThinkPad uh, to put Linux on, but it came with Windows 7. And so I've been using it with that. And one of the things when I downloaded Firefox and installed it, Firefox's default uh, search engine is Yahoo. So I left it that way to see if I would need to change it. A couple of times I've decided to do a search in Google and I have a feeling it's more that I've learned the quirks of Google so I knew how to craft the query better. Uh, but most of the time I search in Yahoo and it gives me exactly what I was looking for. 
Yeah, I mean, it's both a, a blessing and a curse that they're so dominant because everybody else feels like they have to keep catching up to them, and then we don't notice that they were all pretty good for a long time, and they're probably all great. You know, yeah. like Bing would probably give me exactly what I need right now if I went and checked it. I just don't think to. It just only gets scary for Google when the devices aren't showing us who they're using, and then all bets are off. Well, that is it for the show. Uh, thank you, Scott Johnson, as always. Uh, I know you've got uh, – what's this little little soiree that you're putting together uh, oh, coming up in a couple of weeks? I have our yearly uh, fan convention called Nerdtacular. It's uh, happening the 30th, 31st – no, it's the 31st and 1st, I guess, although we'll be there on the 30th. Anyway, it's a little confusing. It's the end of this month. It's only in a couple of weeks is all, and uh, very excited about it. Lots of producers coming, yourself, Veronica Belmont, Brian Ibbett. Oh, too many to mention. Blizzard's Chris Metzen will be there. We're freaking out a little bit about that. Lots of prizes, costume contests, panels all day for two days, all in this beautiful place. If you want to catch streaming, because if you're coming, you already know. You got your tickets. We sold out of those a long time ago. So if you were coming, you already know you're going to be there, and we can't wait to see it. If you're not, though, I did want to let people know they can see the live proceedings of all the panels via a free video stream that we'll run over at frogpants.com slash live. So it's still a couple of weeks away, but on those two days, if you want to catch all of us doing our thing, and see what's up, you can definitely catch us uh, live there. And if you got any questions for me or any thoughts, just follow me on Twitter. I reply to lots of people. Oh, and thanks to everybody who retweeted the, I had no idea it was going to happen, but that Pluto thing I did yesterday blew up and ended up getting retweeted by, oh, who's the famous Canadian ast astronaut? I forgot his name now. Chris Hadfield? Chris Hadfield retweeted it. Uh, Felicia Day retweeted it. <laughs> like It just went berserk. And by the end of the day, it was like 30,000 retweets. I'm like, what even happened there? But uh, anyway, just thanks to those who thought that was funny and forwarded it to their friends and created kind of a uh, chaos on my You phone. went viral, Scott! <laughs> it was weird. That's the, only most, that's the most viral Twitter thing that's ever happened to me, and it was a complete afterthought. So lesson, here's the lesson, Tom. If you make something quickly without too much thought and you thought it was kind of dumb in the first place, it might go viral. <laughs> it might be a big hit on the internet. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Nerdtacular, uh, we've been mentioning this a lot, so apologies if you're tired of hearing about it, but there is a Daily Tech News Show shirt uh, specially made for Nerdtacular. It was designed by Jenny Josephson, our producer, and then polished up by Seb Gons uh, from our chat room, and it has Nerdtacular on the back with all of our names spelling out Nerdtacular. You can see it at dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. You can order it there, and if you use the code two sides. Uh, you can skip the shipping charge and just pick up the shirt at Nerdtacular if you happen to be going. If your size and everything. So, uh, and don't forget, there will be a live DTNS at the show as well. So there's that. Thanks to our patrons for making it possible for me to do stuff like that. Patreon.com slash Ace Detect and all the people who support the show. It's a value for value model. Um, you, can, you can give as little as you want. You don't have to give anything if you, if you can't afford it. Or you can give as much as you want at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call, 51259-DAILY. Leave us a message. Listen to the show live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern at alphageekradio.com and visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. Back tomorrow with Allison Sheridan as our guest. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> boom. Ba -ba -ba boom. Boom, 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 By the way, the guy, uh, Matthew Oxley, who did that and does the instance theme and stuff, uh, he did the music for that little yeah. piece. He, um, he's on ABC's ESPY Awards tonight with a, some kind of, he's not on it, but his music's being used for some oh, wow. kind of comedy show promo. Yeah. Super, you so. mean Matthew Oxley at MatthewOxley.com? That's the guy. Thank you. Who, thank, who you thank for doing the theme for the instance? Yeah, but you're supposed to say that three times faster when you say it. <laughs> Matthew Oxley at MatthewOxley.com. <laughs> uh, great show, everybody. What should we call it? <laughs> um, well, the leader is right now Neil Young demands that the internet get off his lawn. <laughs> my, my, hey, hey, get off my lawn. Yeah. Keep on rocking oh. in someone else's <laughs> streaming service. <laughs> Oh, rocking in the free in the streaming free world is uh, next up. <laughs> streaming free, I like that. It's clever. Yeah, proxy ham sandwich. <laughs> nice. And then sales fulfilling prophecy. That's nice. That's Look nice. good for a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm looking for others. Cell phone spelled S E L L. 
Uh, mm -hmm. They did there. Tricky, tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, where, which one was that? Reddit and forget it? Reddit and forget it. Mm -hmm. That's, good. Yeah, that's not bad. That's been yeah. submitted before, right? Nope. No? Yeah. I feel I like know. that's familiar. Yeah, there have been so many Reddity yeah, yeah. things. So many well, thank you, W. Things. Scott S. One, for filling in for Beatmaster today. Yes, you are, thank you. You are a dream. Beatmaster Fresh. Sham Gold. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, looking like a race between Rockin' in the streaming free world and Neil Young demands the internet get off his lawn. I really like that for the the internet get off his lawn one. I think yeah. that's like Showbot.tv. I like that. So Neil Young. Can we shorten it and say Neil Young says internet get off my lawn? Well, what about Neil Young to internet? Get off my lawn. That works. That works. Yeah. Neil Young to internet. Get off my lawn. I think that's my favorite one because it's like that Clint Eastwood movie. Wasn't there a movie where Clint Eastwood was like, get off my lawn? How do you spell Neil Young? Is it N-E-I-L? I think it's N-E-I-L, but let me check. I'm going to say Neil Young to net. Yep. Get off my lawn. Yeah, it's N-E-I-L. Thank you. Keep on rocking in a free world. Wow. Yeah, wow, wow. Into the black and out of the streaming. <laughs> you really, that's really good. <laughs> like, put that up with there. I'd put that with Jimmy Kimmel's uh, or Jimmy uh, Fallon. Yeah, you do a good <laughs> no, one. No, it's not that good. That's pretty good. But can you do the boss? Uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon does a great. Story. Probably not. Do them. Certainly not on demand. <laughs> So what's going on in everybody's worlds? Oh, yeah. Well, I've been working on my Bruce Springsteen impersonation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> For about three seconds now. If I keep talking today, I'm going to have a, um, I've got a Janis Joplin brewing in the back of my throat. And if I keep talking, yeah. I can do a whole Joplin concert. Rough yeah. up that voice. It is rough, let me tell you. It, I've basically been nonstop talking since Tuesday morning. Why is that? Why so much talking? So much talking. Uh, you know, freedom's <laughs> just I'm another word for nothing left God. to lose. All right? Is it? I'm not even kidding. Like, I do a mean Janice when I get this way. Um, so oh, I... I want to hear this. Let's hear this. Uh -huh. yeah, I'll save it for Nerdtacular. All right. It's much better in person. Uh, I almost on guarantee on I'll have no voice then. Everyone, sure. Not a problem. <laughs> I'll bust out with 10th Avenue freeze out if you do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... I teach, Scott, is the answer to that question. I teach new media at a school here, and I did. we did music videos yesterday. We talked about music videos on the Internet, so it was basically like a whole lesson about OK Go. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Uh, and so when you play the music videos and talk over them, apparently that's bad because you lose your voice. Mm. Mm, I see. I was, I was expecting a rights issue, but you're right. Yeah, more. Just, no, it's just like. <sighs> about Saturday at M15, I'll be in the same boat, but yep. then I'll have this really great voice the day after that. Yep. It's There's awful. something to that roughed up voice like that works, even though it's not smoke. good for you. I need to smoke. <laughs> no. <laughs> get some clove no, cigarettes. Scott, no. Yeah, I'm going to start now. Wear a beret. As right? soon as you get Nick out of the house, man, just let it yeah. all out. Yeah, exactly. Get out of here, boy. Light up. Get off to I college. Like I'm going to smoke a clove. I, by the way, Tom, I like how you cut yourself off. Instead of saying, let it all hang out, you just stopped. Let it all hang out. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, Scott. <laughs> I know where he was going to go with that. Going with that. I like that. Uh, you know, I, can't, I can't pass up a good wiener joke. I mean, it's what the whole foundation of the morning stream is built on. Mm. The wieners of... all the way down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wieners all around. <laughs> hot dogs. Armor hot dogs. Oh, Ian McKellen did an AMA. I missed this. Aww. I'm Professor... No, wait. Uh, not Professor. I'm Magneto slash Gandalf. Ask Is me anything. Me? What do you think of dirty subreddits? And he said, keep it secret. Keep it safe. <laughs> <laughs> Use vote. That's awesome. 
V O A T. Is it secret? Is it on vote? <laughs> Uh, the vote thing, I heard they got attacked or something, like brought down. Oh, yeah, they got DDoSed. Yeah. Not, a, not a shocker. We have a Daily Tech News Show vote. Uh, Scotty Rowland jumped in on it, uh, and uh, somebody else created it. And thank you to that somebody else who named, I apologize for slipping my mind. Uh, they, Scotty was asking me if we were going to formalize it, and I told him, we'll just kind of see how it goes. If everybody ends up over there, then it's good to have it. Uh, and maybe it'll come in useful for something we don't even anticipate. Um, but Follow I kind of, I mean, the is subreddit the is, is perking along fine. I don't see any reason to try to do two at once or change or anything yet. No. But what's the service that you guys are talking about? Vote. What? Vote? Vote? Yeah, V-O-A-T. V-O-A-T. Dot co. It's basically a Reddit. It's a Reddit clone. Yeah, it's a Reddit clone. It's where and it's where they were all bailing to then when they were having their revolt. Um, oh, it's it's and it's down right now. You go. Oh, you guys were both talking. Oh about no, stuff. it's being botted. So it gave me a, a moment before it. So you go to vote.co, v o a t dot co slash v slash daily tech news show. Uh, there's a uh, nice little sub vote. Right, it's not called a sub vote. What is it called? Uh, subverse. Subverse. Yeah, they have V's instead of R's. Little V. Who would upload that? It seems weird that it would be such a clone. Dr. Whiskey is the one who created it. Thank you, okay. Dr. Whiskey. Hey, no, I like anyone named Dr. Whiskey. Right? If I was making a Reddit like, I'd try to at least do something new. I don't know. It's the same. It's Well, but the issue with Reddit isn't its user interface. True. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I might disagree. But, but they went as far as... That's not say, why people are protesting. That's yeah, what I'm saying. You know what we'll do when we have sub-pages? We'll put a V there, just like the R on the other. Like, it's weird. You don't even have to have that. It's weird. But hey, who am I to say, Tom? Who am I? You're who Scott Johnson. I? To say. You yep. teach your children well. <laughs> Their parents' hell will slowly go by. <laughs> I love that song. I like the whole era. Feed them on your dreams? No, man. I want food. My dreams are my own. That's the problem with Generation X. Freaking hippie parents tried to feed us dreams. We all got stunted growth. Uh, yeah, vote. I don't trust anything that says vote, but it spells goat almost. <laughs> <laughs> it's vote, see? Yeah, vote. I don't like it. I'm like, that just seems like an illegal animal somebody created in a lab. I don't trust it. Tom had me at vote C. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's where you spread your votes around across many subverses. <laughs> amazing. That was amazing. Woke up in the middle of the night with this Screaming. overwhelming feeling that I had forgotten a bunch of nerdtacular things. Like, oh, oh, yeah, I bet that's a natural now. phenomenon at this time of year, huh? I hate it. I want to have it all done. You're, You're like, dead. that's why I hired Corinne. Exactly. Why am I having these dreams? It's the worst ever. That's because you have to trust people, and you have really great people, and you can trust them, but it's still that terrible feeling of, like, I just delegated stuff. Yeah, no. And you have to think about, about it. it. I don't deal with that very well. I never have. But yeah. it'll be fine. it always works out. It's always good. Yeah, and also your crowd is basically the most forgiving crowd in the history of crowds. Oh, I could throw horse poo at them and they would go, <laughs> yay! Free horse poo! Is it, it, it's more worrying about the people that are coming in specifically. And right? you get some horse yeah. poo. And you get some. Uh, like, I shouldn't even be nervous about Metzen. He, it was his idea to come. They, right. they called me and says, we'd like to come. If anything goes wrong, they be like, you decided to come, Metzen. Yeah, it's like, that's on you, dude. <laughs> Do you my a, issue. <laughs> uh, we could talk about this more off the live, but do, do you have a handler? Uh, yeah, basically, Corinne's my handler. Yeah, so you're fine. Really Between her and Dave, I'm handled. Handling. You're handled. Yeah, I'll be fine. It's fine. Stop worrying. I'm not, I know. I'm going to stop. This is what? Worrying. Him worry? I mean, you know, it could be an avalanche, but... Yeah, that won't happen. That already but, did happen. Well, it happened two years ago. And that was yeah. early July. That's when the rain season was yeah. still there. I think we'll be... I, yeah, like, none of those things are worries. They have, new, they have a bunch of new spaces. Like, there's just... It's a, Ooh, it's, new spaces? Yeah, I knew that we were able to make yeah. a little more room and 
We've sold more tickets. Like, it's just better. Everything's better, but I always worry. It's the way it is. Well, it, all right. I will I'll grant you that you're allowed to worry about bringing humans all to one place and the alternate reality consequences of that. Yeah. Just right? the responsibility of taking on 1,500 people plus the people who are performing for them. I get it. That's yeah. just the general anxiety of like, making a big decision. And just if wants it, everyone to have a good time. Yeah, yeah, and if you don't, here's the problem, is that, and I've been told this, people say, well, I would worry more about you if you didn't worry about it. Yeah. Like, sure. If you weren't freaking out, then you just don't care. And I guess that's true. I just wouldn't mind swinging it back just a tiny bit to like a little less waking up at 3 a.m. Have going, we talked about Valium? Because... <laughs> That's what the dentist gives me when they try to shoot my mouth full of needles and I start crying. True. <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm just saying. You're just saying. You know a guy who knows I a guy. I know a guy who knows a Valium guy, and oh, my God. It just makes the smallest difference. Like, I only use it literally when someone's shooting needles in my mouth, but I imagine putting on a con would be similar. That's a good time to do that is when they're shooting yeah. needles. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm actually notable as the person who they remember forever in the dentist's office because of the unmitigated sobbing that <laughs> happened the last time they just tried to deep clean my teeth. Dude, you are me. I was I was not happy. Like I do not. Well, I'm gonna stop talking now. But I do not like the dentist. Yeah, I hate um, him. I actually yeah. really like my dentist, but I hate that I have to know Same. him. Same. Yeah. I was like, why are you lifting up my gums? Stop. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't the drill metal. in my mouth. There should not be the smell of fire coming out of my mouth unless I was just eating tacos. It'd be more like dogs. Dogs have teeth that I know they can have issues, but if you have a good, you take care of your dog and keep him healthy, you have the best. I want to be yeah. like, yeah. I don't have to have anything done. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe Tom's dogs are both in pain right now and we just don't know it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, Sawyer no. is exactly what you're talking about. Django, on the other hand, is just one of those dogs that, even though she's uh, not a purebred, has all of the issues, and they're never the same one twice. It's insane. Yep. And yet, and yet, she's outlived her life expectancy. So. Yeah, she's still kicking. Yeah. It's good. The, uh, it took us forever to find a food that she wouldn't uh, have problems with, not to get too graphic, and uh, they just discontinued it. Oh. So I think I, I think I've found a replacement that she's tolerating okay, but man, that dog. She was supposed to get surgery on her canine cruciate ligament, which is torn, and came up out of the blue with a weird liver reading, and they're like, mm, we can't give mm -hmm. her surgery with that liver. I'm like, that, she just knows how to get out of surgery, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. so she's doing good, you know, like. Yeah, you know, she's a old lady now. She's in her 80s human years, so she moves a little slower, but otherwise she's fine. There you have it. Still, ours is still a puppy now. She probably moves faster than I do. <laughs> Tom's dog moves faster than he does. Hmm? Actually, that's true. Well, that's true. true. That's true of my dog, too. True of my kids. Everyone moves faster. Yeah, everyone moves faster than me. I'm just a hobbit at this point. I'm just a little hobbit. Oh. Wait, Roger, oh, Roger went to ceiling so mode. Roger, you've been. Roger, Roger's having a oh. baby. The baby thing. Roger's having a baby. Uh, what? Another what? one. Expect that. No, he's he's trying to soothe. No one expects Roger to have get pregnant. Mm. <laughs> the Spanish. Insemination. No! no. <laughs> you, 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 oh. Where yeah. are the needles for my eyes? Because I'm ready to stab them out. Fetch the comfy chair. <laughs> the comfy chair. Oh my god. All right. All right. We're, we're done here. I'm out of the post. Certainly. And I don't know what's coming up next, folks. Who Could knows? Could be apocalypse. For all we know, what is it? Uh, it's Wednesday. I don't know. I'm reading the stand again. Something, yeah. on Wednesdays. Something on Wednesdays. What's what's on Wednesdays? I am 106 and I still bake balls. Oh, bread. it's usually Sword and Laser coming up on Wednesdays, but there's no Sword and Laser. It's an off week for Sword and Laser. Yeah. And so Alien Life is today. 
Uh, 8 Bit Life. That's a good one. Life. Roberto's 8 Bit Life. Go yeah. watch 8 Bit Life, folks. 8 Bit Life is the best interview I've ever done. Yeah, me too. I'll agree with go that. Go watch 8 Bit Life. Go, it'd be 8 Bit Life immediately following nothing. Just go watch it. Just go Goodbye. watch it. Oh, Tom, you're.